last kind of look on the, the Lakers here going into the offseason. Um, have to touch on it because LeBron brought it up in his postgame press conference that he has decisions that he needs to mull over about retirement. Um, just said that he has things he needs to think through. I genuinely do not see a world where he retires after getting swept in the playoffs. No shot. It just doesn't seem right. And if he did, I wouldn't believe that he wouldn't unretire. Um, obviously, the first theory that people are thinking of is that if he does retire, he's going to wait for Bronny and just go join whatever team Bronny goes to. I don't know about that, mm-hmm. but um, I don't think he's retiring. I, I would buy more into the fact that he may be saying this to, again, try to get some additional leverage on the front office to make sure that we're keeping the goal in mind. Like we need to be reconstructing this roster to win now. It's always mm-hmm. got to be a win now, which it should always be when you have LeBron on your team, no matter what his age is. Um, because if he has anything left in the tank, like we saw, still can put up 31 points and a half, still can give you 40 point triple doubles in a win or go home situation. That mm-hmm. roster is more, more you know, has more time together, a few different role players potentially to, to slot in. This could be a different series. So going into next year, they have a lot that they can, can try to do in terms of um, retooling this roster. I think the only people that are under contract for them next year is uh, big name contracts, at least, obviously, is LeBron. Um, AD is an extension candidate. Um, Vanderbilt is also going to be extension eligible for the whole season. A big free agent name for them, which is crazy to say, is going to be Austin Reeves. Um, yeah, pay that man. Whatever he wants, pay that man. Yeah, so uh, he's going to – I think he's going to be a very hot commodity, um, similar to guys like uh, Caleb Martin right now, two guys, two <laughs> role players who I think are playing themselves into a very nice payday with their postseason play similar mm-hmm. to what Jalen Brunson was able to do last year. So he's going to be, I'm sure, a very hotly contested free agent, but the Lakers, I would imagine, would love to have him back. Um, and I think that would be a worthwhile move to make, it, move to make, even if they have to you know, pay a little bit more than they would have liked to or planned on earlier. Um, because we saw he was capable of shouldering some scoring load, capable of running, mm-hmm. you know, candling the ball in the pick and roll, um, and provided very, very quality minutes for them, turning into a starter in the postseason here um, for the Lakers. So that's going to be a key free agent for them to try to retain moving forward. Um, what do you think about D'Lo moving forward? He is uh, he can <clears throat> avoid free agency since he's extension eligible all the way through the end of June, um, but potential for him to go to an undrafted free agent deal if that doesn't get done. So what would you like to see the Lakers do with D'Lo moving forward? Um, so basically Adilo's whole situation for me depends on what we do in the off season. As far as I, I, like I said, talking about the LeBron retirement thing, I don't think he's retiring. I believe that it is the, it, he's trying to have a little bit of leverage against the, the front office so that they can make some sort of move. But hopefully I feel like, hopefully I want the Lakers to not panic. Cause the last time we got bounced by the Suns, we kind of panicked and felt like, Oh, we need to make a big move. And then we traded for Russell Westbrook and then we saw how that worked out. So Hopefully the Lakers don't panic. We just seen how the Nuggets kept their team together. They were patient. You know, they developed their guys and you see where they are now. So mm-hmm. um, I would love to sign Austin Reeves back, Rui Hachimura. I hope we sign both of them. I feel like we need to bring those guys back because they're both young. Like Austin Reeves is only going to get better. Rui should only get better. It's not like these guys are old and capped out. Like these guys, you develop these guys, they should only get better from here. But um, as far as D'Lo, uh, that one that one is a little tough because I don't know the money that he's going to be asking for, but if he's going to be unplayable in the playoffs, it's just it doesn't seem like it's going to be the right move to sign him to a big deal. Um, I, I think he can help in the regular season, especially with Anthony Davis being a little bit of injury prone, LeBron James obviously being older. I don't see LeBron playing a lot of minutes. if he When he comes back to the next season, I don't see him playing a lot of minutes. Hopefully he, he caps out around like 32 minutes a night in the regular season because I, I just feel like he needs to preserve himself for the playoffs. So in that aspect, I think D'Lo could be a valuable piece to have, help you win regular season games. So we're not, so we're just staying afloat basically till the playoffs come. But yeah, man, with D'Lo, it's, it's just tough. And the Lakers have also been linked to, you know, Kyrie Irving, 
I've seen that they're now linked to a Trey Young trade. So obviously, if we bring one of those guys, then D'Lo's gone. But yeah. even then, I don't know if I even want a Kyrie or a Trey Young because that means probably getting rid of either Austin Reeves or Rui. Or if somehow you get Kyrie or Trey Young to take less money and you keep Reeves and Rui, that means the entire bench is going to be me, you, and some people from down the street. Right. Like, <laughs> it's going to be nobody. So yeah. I don't know if I really like that. So if we don't get one of those big name guys, which I honestly I I don't think I really want one of those big name guys for the money that they're going to be asking, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be opposed to bringing D Lo back, but it's, like I said, it's just tough, man. Like when the postseason comes around, it's hard to play a guy who's a negative on a defensive end because when he's not hitting shots, he's literally unplayable, like we've seen in this playoff series. So uh, it, it's tough. Hopefully, maybe he can you bring him back. He can buy in a little bit on the defensive end. I don't know how likely that is with him being, I think, 28 years old this later into his career. People don't really change. Like, by this point, you kind of know who guys are. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if he, if he comes in, if he hits shots, then, he, I, I said, like I said, he could help us definitely in the regular season. And then hopefully in the playoffs, he just he, – he ends up making shots and he could be, at least be a positive on the offensive end. For sure. I – uh I can see where the thought process to try to bring in a guy like Kyrie or like you said, the trade rumors for Trey Young, because the Lakers, I think, could benefit from a closer, right? Like 100%. going into next year, your closer is going to be a 39-year-old LeBron. Austin Reeves, that's our closer. Right, or <laughs> role players like that stepping up in him, you know, really trying to take another step up in his game, so – I understand the thought process there. It's tough with the, you know, already having two huge contracts with LeBron and AD on the roster, trying to fit a third one in for a guy like Kyrie. Like you said, that really is going to put them in a very tight space with the cap. And something I heard them talking about on Through the Wire, which is, I don't think I've ever thought about this way, but is really where the league is going. There aren't that many old vets that you can just sign for the minimum these days like there used to be like you think back to a few years ago there was a a large amount of vets that you could bring in on veteran minimum deals who would ring chase but that were good right and there aren't as many of those guys now right like jr smith is out the league carmelo just retired which we'll touch on later um you know yeah boogie is playing in puerto rico um like the league has gotten more young to fill some of those role player spots. And a lot more teams are keeping younger guys to fill that void. And I know we kind of had a longer conversation about this earlier is why that is the case. And I genuinely do think just the talent level has gotten better. In addition to that, probably the youth aspect, you know, you have the potential that plays into that and essentially developing them into to being more than what they already are. So I just, I don't think the market for veteran, you know, minimum guys is, as big at least as it used to be when, you know, we look like 10 plus years ago, or like even on like LeBron James heat teams, you got Mike Miller and Shane Batty. Shane you Batty, can yeah, find yeah, a guys, bunch of yeah. guys who are later into their career, get them to sign mm-hmm. for like a million dollar deal. And they just are the glue pieces that construct the last bit of the roster there. So I think if there's a bigger market, it would be easier to say like, yeah, we, we need to go and, or the Lakers need to go and get one more guy to be that kind of closer to have a bigger offensive presence that then allows AD to kind of slot in nicely as a third option instead of a second mm-hmm. option um, and can continue to be the dominant defender that he is. So I don't know. Do you have faith in Rob Polinka? I think he's completely convinced a large portion of the Lakers fans that I wanted him gone after the moves he made at the trade deadline. So He's gonna um, have to gonna have to pick up that phone and make some more deals this summer. Uh, Rob Pelink is hit or miss with me, man. Because if he doesn't make this trade at the deadline, it's like he, I'd have been calling for him to be out of here, you know. Because basically, like we talked about before, wasted the whole first half of the season, which caused us to tr- play catch up and which caused us to be tired in the playoffs. You know what I mean? Everything comes at a, at a cost eventually. So, um, like I said, the the main things I just want. Bring Austin Reeves back, bring Rui back, and do not panic and feel like we absolutely cannot win without Kyrie. I do feel like it would be great that, like, in a perfect world, where we don't have to get rid of Reeves, Rui, we can keep Vando, and and then sign Kyrie Irving. In a perfect world where money is not a thing, 
then that obviously would be great. You know, we get a closer, we get another scorer, we get a scorer from the perimeter because LeBron James being our closer is a little bit tough when he's 39 years old. And his only way to score, really, because he can't shoot, is to drive to the basket. Yeah. Later in the fourth quarter when he's tired, you obviously see he can't drive to the basket with mm-hmm. that same efficiency. So getting another closer, another perimeter scorer like Kyrie Irving obviously would help. But I just feel like what he would cost wouldn't work in the long run. Because, like, say we sign Kyrie Irving, maybe we keep Reeves. We got to let go of Rui or whatever. We fill the bench out with a bunch of whoever's. Kyrie gets hurt we're done. LeBron gets hurt, we're done. AD gets hurt, we're done. You know what I mean? Like we've seen how this how this this way of building a team has worked before. Mm-hmm. You're it's it's a high risk high reward thing because one of your star, your stars go down, you're done. Yeah. And with LeBron being 39 years old, Anthony Davis already being injury prone, and not to mention Kyrie Irving is not the healthiest guy in the world either. Kyrie Irving also has has deal, dealt with injuries, so yeah, it's, it's honestly it's tough. I it's funny because it's this is not going to happen at all. But if you really, really say you want to win your fifth ring, why not take a little pay cut? If you're LeBron James, why not take a pay yeah. cut? If you if you know what it takes, he to don't need the money. I promise, he does not. And that's need what I'm saying. You're a billionaire. You don't <laughs> need the money. You want Kyrie Irving. You know Kyrie Irving is going to demand big money. Kyrie Irving's not taking a pay cut. But you still know you you need to keep these role players, these rotational pieces, the Austin Reeves, the Rui Hachimores. Why not take a pay cut? You know what I mean? You're, like, you're already considering retirement. You might play. I think LeBron has max two years left in the league, and I think he's gone. Why not take a pay cut? If you really want to win that fifth ring, you really want to take this load off of yourself as far as this scoring load. Because, you know, when you bring Kyrie Irving in, that's a lot of scoring that he could take off of his plate, basically. Yeah. That's a lot of closing that he doesn't have to do at his age. So, listen, I know it's not going to happen, but if I'm LeBron James, why not even consider that? It's a fair point. It's definitely a fair point. It would definitely give them a lot more flexibility to construct a full roster. So, Rob Palenka's got a lot a lot of work to do this summer. Yeah. Um, so, I also I also think we need uh we need some big man depth too. Like I I don't like Anthony Davis being the only big man on our team. Like yeah. cuz he's not even really and that's another thing. He's not even a center banging with Jokic now like in Jokic the playoffs. Jokic is muscling like, him. Jokic is a legit 7 foot center. Anthony Davis is 6'10, 6'11 with like a slim frame. Anthony right, Davis is not, not a, a center. Yeah. Like and he's still playing I think great defense on Jokic. Like obviously you can't stop him cuz only hope to slow him down a little bit, but we need a real center on the roster and real backup center depth because Anthony Davis already being hurt is bad enough, but now you're going to make him play the five all year long, bang with the bigs, and then expect him to stay healthy? Like, that's that's not going to happen. So that's another thing that needs to happen this offseason. But I don't know, it, it's tough the way the money's looking right now. Yeah. So probably the last time we talk about the Lakers for a little while so. You want to give any any closing thoughts on this <sighs> season? Two and ten to the Western Conference Finals. Floor is yours. Listen, man, we started two and ten. You know the season was lost. I was done. I was ready to give up on this season. Come All Star break, even when we made the trades, I was like, all right, we might win a couple games, but it is what it is. We start playing well. I start believing again. LeBron gets hurt. Then we start playing well without LeBron. Austin Reeves becomes a star. Listen, man, I, I love this Lakers team. I really do. Like, this Lakers team, it was fun to watch this whole year. Well, no, the second half of the year. It was a fun team to watch. You know, we overachieved a lot, you know, 2-10 and ten to the Western Conference Finals. So, it is what it is. We lost to the better team. Hopefully, we just come back next year and we, we come back strong, man. We beat the Warriors. The Clippers got eliminated. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. As long as the Celtics lose, we good. I'm happy. 